Hi everyone. So we came to know many more details about ethics in clinical research. And this was one term which you heard in the last video. It was about ethics committee. So what is it? Ethics committee is. Is it a committee? Are they ensuring ethics? What is the requirements? How do we know what are the requirements? What is it their rules and responsibility? What is it that really ensure when a clinical research studies are conducted? And how do they ensure that? Do you have a lot of doubts about it? Right. So in this particular part, we will be talking about ethics committee in detail. When we talk about ethics in clinical research, we cannot keep the stakeholder ethics committee out of it. They are the basic one of the stakeholder who is involved, who is responsible to ensure ethics is followed throughout the clinical study. In this part, we will be talking about the ethics committee. We didn't mention about ethics committee in earlier part of this module and we did touch upon mentioning ethics committee is one of the important stakeholder in clinical research. Whereas in this part, we will try to get to know more and details about ethics committee. What is their responsibilities? What are their compositions? What is the role which they play in clinical research, etc, etc. So we will look in detail about ethics committee what is ethics committee it's an independent committee which ensures independently that all the compliance requirements and all the ethical principles are followed when a clinical research studies are done this involves from the start of the study till the end of the study it has specific composition to be followed which we will look into details in the upcoming slides and how do they ensure ethics is something which we will be touching upon in this slides. The roles and responsibilities of an ethics committee is to ensure the trial, the study which is conducted is scientifically valid and the risk versus benefit is appropriately carried out and the informed consent process is properly documented and performed etc etc which includes as we mentioned in the earlier part ensuring if there is a vulnerable population is included how their rights and well-being is taken care and if there are conflict of interest in the study which is getting conducted all of this are the components which an ethics committee makes sure how do they do this process so the entire studies are conducted based on a study design or a protocol which will be developed in the initial stage itself and that will be submitted for ethics committee for their review and approval. So a clinical research studies are conducted once we get an approval from ethics committee. So while reviewing the protocol or while giving an approval for a study to go ahead or to start with, ethics committee will be reviewing the entire study structure including all these aspects which I have mentioned. That even includes the clinical investigators qualifications, their expertise, their experience, are they qualified enough to conduct this study etc etc. So how do ethics committee members ensure this? So ethics committee members are also periodically trained on ethical aspects, the policies, the relevant procedures which to be followed timely so the ethics it's important that the ethics committee members are also trained in all the requirements so that they are aware what is needed and then when they review the protocol when they review the study design when they review the investigator uh, qualification etc they comply with the requirements so when we talk about ethics committee, normally this is termed as independent ethics committee because they are independent of the team who conducts the research. So if it's an, a hospital site in which a clinical research study is conducted, the hospital 
chairman cannot be the chairman of independent ethics committee it has to be a different person uh, so that is why it is called, uh, normally called as independent ethics committee so we have seen about uh, discussed about the composition of ethics committee and uh, in the further slide we will have more details about it and responsibilities of each role in ethics committee there are multiple stakeholders who is involved in an ethics committee there are multiple uh, medical and non medical technical and non technical team members who is involved and each one has different responsibilities to play and the next point is procedures for their function so whatever is the procedure the ethics committee is following they needs to be having a defined procedure for it for example how the approval procedure will be done what will be the uh, process of review how many times the review will be done or who will be the authorized uh, approving authority etc etc everything needs to be detailed in a procedure and as per that procedure the ethics committee will be functioning moving ahead we had discussed about approval of the procedural documents and how do they ensure ethics in the study conduct from the design till the study closure so there are multiple reviews which is involved it's a full quorum review or expedite review or follow up review so there will be some uh, study designs which require a full quorum review like whatever is the quorum requirement defined as per the regulatory guidelines will be ensured so that each member Uh, res uh, respective members have can express their view on agreeing or non agreeing to the study design or there is a change required there can be an expedite review where there is a fast approval process is requested by the investigator but all of this procedure will be done as per the defined process and there can be a follow up review there is an initial approval given but then there will be a follow up on depending on the safety data which is getting generated from the study Ethics committee is also responsible to do the site monitoring like where the study is getting conducted review that site once in a while to ensure whatever is the required features are ensured while conducting the study and documentation and its storage the entire study ethics committee documentations approval their review procedure their quorum uh, minutes of meeting etc etc all and the procedural document everything needs to be defined documented and stored for a particular uh, time period as per the regulatory requirement so that whenever there is a need to cross check have they done the procedure as per the requirement this can be demonstrated moving ahead on the roles and responsibility ethics committee as we mentioned plays an integral role in ensuring clinical research the responsibilities of ec researchers and institutions are different so each stakeholders have different responsibilities and ethics committee's responsibility is independently ensure the clinical research studies are conducted as per the ethical policies they oversee the review the conduct the monitoring of collaborative research completely moving ahead the next uh, the responsibility uh, as we mentioned earlier as well is review of the protocol which is submitted and ensure respect for sensitivities and values of participant and communities at the studies like whatever is uh, whoever is a participant their individuality is ensured and the right is ensured so if a vulnerable population is involved there will be a separate monitoring done for that group of study to ensure that the human rights are ensured a mechanism of communication between ec to different participating Uh, centers so there should be a mechanism through which the communication between how the participant can approach to the ethics committee who is the ethics committee they should be approaching all the details will be shared with the study participants as well so the different stakeholders for example if it's investigator or if it's or if it's a pharmaceutical company or the sponsor or even the participant will know the entire details of ethics committee which ethics committee to be approached when there is a need and in case of any conflict the decision of local ethics com ethics committee based or uh, on relevant facts guidelines and laws will be considered as final so ethics committee has a very big role to play there the next one is ensure the required expertise and training like if an investigator and a study team is involved ethics committee reviews their cv as well as their expertise to ensure and the medical certificate etc etc to ensure they are the qualified people to conduct this study and protect the interest and right which is the fundamental facts of clinical research ensure that they are not treated as mere collectors of samples or data so the patients are not just you know 
treated as a data generator they been more treated with sensitivity towards their the patient interest on and above anything else the composition of ethics committee as we mentioned earlier ethics committee should be multidisciplinary and multi sectorial so from different sectors or different expertise people will be involved in an ethics committee so there should be adequate representation of age and gender it the age representation should be justified the gender representation should be justified it should not be uh, all men or all women there should be an equal gender representation as well to get a different view point depending on the gender preferably 50% of members should be non affiliated or from outside uh, the institutions so as i mentioned earlier also the chairman of the ethics committee cannot be the chairman of the institution and additionally it is suggested or it is expected to have 50% of the ethics committee member from outside the organization so that there is no conflict of interest or an undue influence the number of members in ethics committee should be preferably between 7 and 15 the minimum of 5 members should be present to meet the required quorum so any of the protocol which is getting reviewed and approved or any approval process which is to be happen in a quorum we should consist at least a minimum of 5 members and even that 5 members who all that should be that is also there is a very very specific details which is given in the guidelines you can refer to icmr guidelines which we will be providing a link to check what is the minimum requirement or who all are the five members uh, who will should be present when a protocol or a study is approved to conduct the ethics committee should have a balance between medical and non medical member technical non technical depending upon the need of the institution so this is also very important aspects where it should not be all doctors who is taking a decision or all the medically qualified people taking a decision there is a layman it's a requirement of a layman also in that so that you know that person can think based upon a a, a general a normal uh, a population how they think on about the study not only on a medical uh, perspective so likewise we have different representation required the members which we mentioned 7 to 15 who all can be those members there is a very very specific details given in icmr uh, so that we know who all can be part of it and uh, who can be uh, representing the ethics committee so everything which is related to the ethics committee is also very well defined in icmr guideline you can have a look into it have more and read it completely to get to know more about ethics committee and its details thank you so much for paying attention to this particular part of our module which spoke much in detail about ethics committee and i'm sure now you have a fair idea what an ethics committee is what is called independent ethics committee what is institutional ethics committee what is institutional review board etc etc what is the quorum required how do they really ensure ethics in clinical research and how they become an integral part of the clinical research stakeholders and when you go through the guidelines you will get to know more and specific details about it and i'm sure you would have find this is very very interesting right when a complete research is happening there is a completely independent body who is closely monitoring at each and every phase of the trial or a clinical research is happening to ensure everything is done properly isn't it very compelling isn't it gives much more confidence to whoever is getting involved in clinical research if it's a patient who is getting involved or even for a doctor who is getting involved and the other stakeholders are so ethics committee is a very very integral part of clinical research they give confidence to the population who is getting involved in clinical research the other stakeholders like the investigator as well as to the pharmaceutical company who is also a one of the stakeholders how do they give that by ensuring that whatever is required to be followed by conducting us clinical research and ensuring ethics it is done so that there is no concern about ethics so this itself gives an idea how ethics is very very important when a clinical research is conducted and how it really affects if the ethics is not ensured and what all the consequences etc 
so thank you so much for your time and patience to listen to me through and throughout the module to go through the details please go through the link to get more and more information around whatever topics we have covered in this module thank you so much